KFI AM 640 is later with Mo Kelly live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. And there's so much to get to at the risk of saying that Twala Sharp might have been correct. We got to tell you about how a seismologist has warned of increasing earthquake activity here in Southern California. And also, have you heard the latest about the lawsuit, the sexual harassment lawsuit for $65 million against Inglewood Mayor James Butts? Well, the details are pretty salacious. They're pretty incredible. And yes, there are emails and text messages. We'll cover that. And there's a new study which ranks California's best community colleges. You probably wonder where your favorite community college ranks. So much to talk about. Oh, and by the way, traffic is back. Oh, my goodness. Traffic is back. I told you on Monday, you know, school was back in session. I told you on Tuesday we would have a vice presidential candidate here in Newport Beach for a fundraiser. And Wednesday, I think we are back to freaking abysmal normal. That's the only way I can describe it. It was it took me a good hour and a half to get here. And I left early trying to anticipate how bad the traffic would be. And it was three times worse than that. And we're early in the school's season. You know, not everyone is back from vacation. Like the college students aren't all the way back yet on the roads. So it's going to get far worse, far worse. And that means more people are going to be flipped off by Mark Ronner. That means that Tawala is going to be popping more trunks than usual. No, no, no. You sure about that? I Look, I put on nothing but smooth jazz on my way here so I could get through one of those uh, Mark Ronner level white knuckle death rides. <laughs> and I was chill the whole way through, but I was simmering inside. But I said, you know what? There are too many guns owned by people driving and they're waving them around here in Southern California. I'm like, I'm not getting shot for challenging someone to fight i'm i'm getting better in my old age there was this car it was a white honda ridgeline i remember it and and i'm thinking like wow i've never seen that kind of car in white before so i was already aware of it and this guy was just weaving i assume it was a guy he had tinted windows weaving in and out of traffic just being real dangerous about it and so i said okay he's gonna cut me off at one point I know he is because he's an a-hole and he's just and we're going down the 110 freeway north. There's nowhere he's going to go fast. It doesn't matter what lane you're in. You have to deal with the 10 freeway and then you have to deal with the five freeway interchange. You're not getting anywhere fast. It doesn't matter. And then he went all the way over into the HOV lane. He didn't, he didn't have a transponder. I could tell because he was jumping in and jumping out. It's like, dude, what are you doing? And so finally he cut me off and then. All this rage started swelling up from the bottom of my feet. I was ready to cuss him out something awful. And I said, don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do it. Just grit your teeth. Don't look at him. Don't stare at him. Don't look at him. And I looked at him and I said, no, don't look at him. Don't look at him. And it was all I could do not to roll down my window so he could see all the expletives come out of my mouth. So I could just be sure that he saw every cuss word that was being formed on my li- lips. I want him to see the F word <laughs> oh. being created real time. So you can, because when you create the effort, you know, you, you put your lips together and you, you force out the like, <laughs> want him to see that. And I said, no, don't make eye contact because that's a, that's an escalation. Yeah. And we're only doing four miles an hour. If the person should start shooting, there's nowhere for me to go. I can't get out of my car. I can't hide or anything. So I just, I ate it. I swallowed it. Yeah, man. And I realized I was maturing. Noble of you. And I thought of you, Mark Ronner, because I know you would have flipped him off. I know you would have. That would have been one of those times where you would have found a way to justify giving him the double bird. Sometimes an extended middle finger is the most eloquent answer you can give to an offense on the road. It no violence. Be. No, no, no. It may be, but you can't control. It's like, look, I, I say this all the time. You can control what you do, but you can't control the response. To what you do okay now you you may flip this guy off but the response may be another escalation where they want to uh pull out a gun or they want to pull out a bat they want to pop the trunk like toala and you know and then all of a sudden you're in a situation and you're just trying to get to work well that's two bad things on them then they start it 
you respond in a nonviolent way, and then they respond to the response with more bad stuff. You're that's trying, that's you're just trying, rude. You're trying to rationalize this, Mark. No, no, no. I actually I had a double finger day coming in here a couple of days ago. Uh, it's it's getting intense out there again. Is it? Or is it you getting intense? No, I really try to keep a lid on it, but sometimes, you know, it's like those old Western movies where the where the former gunfighter or sheriff has his has his belt and his six shooter under the bed in a box, and he resists the bullies until he just can't anymore. And and in the third act, he pulls that box out from under the bed and straps it on. Don't they usually kill though the sheriff? That, like he dies at the end? No, the no, no, no. The good guys always win. Smooth jazz, Mark. That's yeah. the answer. <laughs> yeah. Smooth so jazz. Then, how about some Enya? Even better. Yeah? Okay. That would make me angry. I'm not an Enya fan. Well, somebody swerved uh, and uh, nearly whacked me yesterday on the way in, but they did the thing where they put the hand up to the window like, sorry, sorry, and it's like, oh. I don't, I don't right. mind that. Mistakes yeah. do happen. Yeah, yeah. Okay? But when you're being an intentional a-hole and you're just weaving in and out of traffic, and I have to drive for both of us, I have to make sure that you don't get in accident with me because you are being so careless let me submit to you mo kelly right here and now that by submit not to me re by not responding to that in a somewhat stern but non-violent way you're exacerbating the problem you're not letting them know that they're in the wrong and making things dangerous for everyone well yes you're so complicit why, so why don't i just go ahead and ram him and take him out of the the equation altogether no you're making up a ramming straw man here there's no need to ram anyone you don't need to get physical just Give him the sign that, hey, unacceptable, my friend. But if it, <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> it's later with Mo Kelly. I'm going to talk about earthquakes in California when we come back. You're listening to Later with Mo Kelly on demand from KFI AM 640. And I got to admit, I've been kind of concerned, just a little bit, just a wee bit concerned about the earthquakes we've had in recent weeks. You know? I said, if it's above five, don't wake me unless it's above five. Well, one was above five, one was below five, but the one which was below five was pretty near <laughs> where a lot of us live. So it felt a lot stronger than a 4.7 or whatever it happened to be. But it gets us thinking about, well, if we're having all these quakes, is that relieving tension from the various fault lines, or is it indicative of something else? Well, conventional wisdom, or at least I think what we were we were trained to believe is that, you know, if you had quakes, it would relieve tension, and, you know, a, a number of small quakes would keep us from having the big one. That's that's the old wives' tale, as they say. That's what we were taught to, to believe, and that's not true. That's not true at all. It seems, according to some seismologists here in Southern California, that more quakes mean... <clears throat> More quakes are coming. So if we had two last week, you think, well, what does that mean, Mo? I mean, is that like a lot for a certain amount of times? Well, let me put it this way. Since 1932, past 92 years, Southern California has averaged 10 to 12 earthquakes of a magnitude 4.0 or greater per year. And you may not remember them. Well, yeah, because they're 4.0. They're probably lesser. You know, you're not going to feel them. You're not going to notice them. But... The past 20 years, we have decreased having just five or so quakes annually. Big picture, you can think, well, fewer quakes mean fewer quakes. But that trend seems to be changing now where the frequency is increasing once again, which could be, possibly, maybe, could be a signal that we're due for not only more quakes, but quakes of a higher magnitude but nobody can actually predict what a future quake is going to be but they're using the past as a predictor of the future i'm more disappointed that someone like mark ronner who's supposed to be on it with the weather couldn't tell us that we had not one but two i would say sizable quakes coming our way he can't even predict the rain <laughs> Save for yourself, young man. Yes, thank you for that. That felt great. That's uh, the closest I'll come to getting doused anytime soon. And you as well. I, I'm no uh, geologist. I'm no seismologist. I uh, I just report. What about meteor meteorologist? I'm I'm none of those ologists, but uh, I do what I can here. Okay. Oh, sometimes your best is just not good enough. <laughs> what are we dating? <laughs> <laughs> what is this? 
had to make it weird. Uh, yeah. See, have you noticed? Uh, good evening, Stefan. Did you notice he just had to make it weird? Well, you I'm triggered just asking me about, every time. It's, it's, I'm just asking about his professional qualifications. I wish you'd stop blaming the victim. But uh, let's I, let's not get hung up on this. Uh, the, the quakes uh, are, are troublesome. All right. And as someone who is not originally from California, do you feel in any way unnerved? Oh, we got quakes in, in Seattle uh, where I moved here uh, nearly six years ago. And uh, Seattle's actually due for a 9.0. And if you're not familiar with what a 9.0 will do, it liquefies everything. And we would feel it all the way around the world. A 9.0. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Uh, I've watched a lot of movies. Okay. Yeah. I worked with a colleague <laughs> at the uh, uh, Seattle Times who wrote a book on it. You don't want to be around for a 9.0. Standing in a doorway is not going to help you. With no, one a, of those. a 9.0, to be serious, from what I understand, you would at least feel it all across the country. And depending on where it is, if the 9.1 is near the Pacific Ocean or in the Pacific Ocean, then we have to talk about tsunamis. That's exactly right. So your go back. That's exactly right. <laughs> I don't want to interrupt you and your ego there, so if you just let me know when my opening okay, is. Okay, okay, wait, 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 <laughs> yeah. wait. Okay, go. Okay, thank <laughs> you. No, your go bag, none of that's going to do you any good because th this is this is like catastrophic level uh, civilization-ending stuff that's going to kill thousands of people. Your building that's been retrofitted isn't going to help you in a 9.0. You no, know, it is not retrofitted for a 9, and that's a, a part of a larger discussion that we've been having, that it's nice to be earthquake prepared, but no one is prepared for Armageddon. No one is prepared for the whole city coming down. And I'm not, I'm not trying to be um, fatalistic. I'm not trying to be sensationalistic. I'm just saying that... All we can do is prepare for a reasonable situation. And in a 9.0, there's no building which is going to be standing in L.A. if it were to hit in the heart of L.A. No, make peace with your God. Why well, is it going to be my God? Well, we might have different ones. I don't know. It's just God. If you say so. I, I'm not prepared to get in a full... A uh, full theological discussion here, but I guess I could. Look, you, you, you're you not um, a seismologist. You're not a paleontologist. You, you, you were almost in a CIA. Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> you uh, got 45 degrees. I, it doesn't make any difference. Let's focus on what you were talking about, which is the I'm news saying, things and, and not on me. No, more earthquakes from what we understand now. The science suggests that more earthquakes means more earthquakes. And so we may be dealing with this or having the same conversation next week. And hopefully it will be like a, a five and not a six. And people wrongly, I know we've talked about it, but I think it bears mentioning once again, people wrongly think that as you go up the Richter scale, that you're just going up numerically and not exponentially. And I think like a six is a, is a thousand times stronger than a five and so forth going up the scale. I but, actually I have to admit, I wasn't aware that it worked that way until you brought that up a few days ago. Thank you very much. I am a wealth and a vat of knowledge. <laughs> the two of you are a <laughs> steaming pool of knowledge. <laughs> I'm just glad you're finally coming around. To what? To seeing that all of my editions Hold on of earthquake awareness... And I hear a Waymo comic coming. No, 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 no. This is nothing about honking horns late at night at 4 a.m. You'll be safer this in an air taxi. Um, this this is about the fact that that we should be paying slightly more attention and taking this increase a little more because it's not just that we're going to have more. They're going to possibly increase in scale. So just want you know, just want to say thank you for bringing this up. I didn't put this in. I just want to say thank you for putting this in today. No, you you literally did put this in. Oh, I did. Oh, yes, wait. You did. Oh, 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 you oh. put this on the run. Oh, my bad. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's why I was saying like, there's got to be a Waymo appearance somewhere around here. No, but I don't know why they have steering wheels. Because they do allow the option in an emergency for a driver to take over, if I'm not mistaken. No, it's a placebo steering wheel. It does nothing. <laughs> no, 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 because it does, does it? turn. I've seen the videos. It like When it's going left, the steering wheel does turn left. It, it is operational in that regard. To me, that's so weird. Why? I mean, it is who's an actual in, car. Who's jumping in the car? Who is in the back seat that's going to jump to the front? They're watching it is movies. automated. It doesn't mean that it is always automated. I'm quite sure if they sent out a Waymo tech, that the Waymo tech, because we've seen them, they, they've actually had to drive the car from point A to point B. Mm. Yeah. 
You could have uh, mm. a Tom Cruise Minority Report character on the run from the law, and he could have to jump into one of these things and take it over. You never know. That's they're, plan- they're planning for the future. No, that's one of my favorite um, 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 movies and also uh, Philip K. Dick stories. PKD is great. And I was looking, and I know we got to go to break, but there are still some... Uh, Philip K. Dick stories, which have not been turned into movies that I'm waiting on. They're almost too smart to do that with, you know? Those are some pretty uh, intellectual, bizarre, out there things if you've never read any of his stuff. And there's stuff I've, I've come back to in later years of my life and realized, oh, God, I didn't understand that the least bit the first time I read it. And most of the time, they don't get it right. Usually, it's a short story, and they try to expand it. And, they, and they, they're they good, but they're never great. I thought Minority Report was tending towards great as opposed to good. I agree, and I think that Philip K. Dick would have been a hundred percent against Tawala's embrace of Waymo. Oh, okay. absolutely! Right. No, no, no. I agree with Mark Brown on this. Unfortunately, if he saw it, he would be like, "Man, Tawala, I should have been writing in support of this." No, all he along. actually warned against a lot of technology of the future. He would have suspected you, Tawala, of being a replicant. Did you ever see the movie Imposter? I like that one. I no. did, but I kind of purged it right away. Did you retain it? Yeah, I did. I did. Um, yeah. Yeah, Gary Sinise. It was really good. Okay. It's later with Mo Kelly. We have a James T. Butts update, and it's not good. But, well, actually, you know, the story is pretty salacious, so you'll probably enjoy it. But it's $65 million worth of salacious. We'll tell you about it next. You're listening to Later with Mo Kelly on demand from KFI AM 640. Inglewood Mayor James Butts. He's facing a $65 million lawsuit. It's a demand settlement. For sexual harassment and retaliation against former employee Melanie McDade. And let me just say off the top, uh, she's going to get it. She is going to get probably every single dollar. Also named in the, in the lawsuit, City of Inglewood, current assistant city manager, Jose Cortez, previously human resources director. In other words, the person who had all the records and knew what was going on, most likely tried to bury it. And former city manager, Artie Fields. There are emails, there's text messages, there are always emails, there's always text messages. What started off as a consensual relationship, from what I understand, um, Ms. McDade tried to end the relationship, and she alleges that Inglewood Mayor James Butts would not let her leave the relationship, um, withheld job opportunities and more. Specifics in the complaint reveal particularly appalling instances of harassment. On one occasion, according to the complaint, Butts demanded oral sex so persistently that it left McDade with painful carpet burns. I'm not going to elaborate beyond that. Jesus. But it's graphic. It's very specific. And their their emails and their text messages corroborating. Public degradation followed, according to the suit, with the mayor requiring McDay to serve him food during Metro board meetings. And the lawsuit um, implores uh, people reconsider the dismissal of her initial complaint filed in January 2021, which the city waved off as unfounded and empty rhetoric, which brings us back to why the city manager and a human resources director were included in this lawsuit. But according to uh, published reports, the unveiled text and email communications cast a damning light on the veracity of her allegations. Put another way, uh, they corroborate and they give the necessary evidence. She's going to get her money. Let me just give you some backstory. McDade met Butts back in 2010 during his mayoral campaign and entered into this consensual relationship. There were, I guess, promises made. Once hired as senior assistant, McDade, according to her, faced continuous demands for demeaning sexual performances. She tried to end the relationship, and she alleges that led to retaliatory measures, including the stripping of her job duties and eventual termination. Uh, despite McDade's efforts to distance herself, Butts continued continue to pursue her, uh, showed up at her house uninvited, and leveraged his influence to obstruct her health benefits and future employment opportunities, allegedly. 
And she's seeking a $65 million settlement to address lost income, emotional distress, punitive damages, and attorney fees. Not a lawyer. Haven't seen all the evidence, but she's going to get it because it's easier to get this settlement than it would be to try to go to court and lose and have to pay even more when you're talking about documentary evidence. And the human resources department is involved as well. The city Mm. manager. In other words, they knew they probably saw the same evidence and either they discouraged her or they were in on uh, they were obviously complicit, according to the complaint. They were complicit in the cover-up and the continuance of of the behavior. She's going to get the money. I don't know anything about what happened in the office outside of what we see here. What I do know is that with great power comes great abuse when it right. comes to business. Yeah, men in power. Men in power. Specifically men in power. Specifically, great power, great abuse. We have seen it time and time again. I'm not talking about news stories. I'm talking me and you, Mo. Yep. We have seen it time and time again. That is the only reason I agree wholeheartedly. I don't care what in the particulars. I have to say you hired her and gave her this position based off of your consensual relationship. Yep. That alone right there. We've seen this story the, too many times. The, too many times. Yeah. Too many times. We, we know how this plays out. Yeah. And she wanted to move on with her life and also move on with her career. According to this, he didn't allow it and then tried to put the kibosh on her career. Um, I don't know Mayor Butts. I think I've interviewed him once back when we were on KTLK many, many years ago. But I think part of the reasons why this story hasn't received the type of attention that it normally would, well, he has been in the limelight with what he's done for the city of Inglewood, uh, bringing the Rams, bringing the Chargers, SoFi Stadium, the Intuit Dome. He's brought in a lot of money. He's a powerful individual, at least in local politics. He has helped a lot of powerful people as well. And I think that has insulated him to some degree. But she's going to get her money this out of this. It's later with Mo Kelly. KFI AM 640. We're live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. And when we come back, the best community colleges here in California, well, we'll tell you the top and the bottom. You're listening to Later with Mo Kelly on demand from KFI AM 640. Let's go to college or at least community college real quickly. Let's find out which is the best two-year institution here in the state of California, at least according to Wallet Hub. Make it real simple. And they looked at 77 different institutions here in the state of California. Let's start with number 10 and go all the way to number one. Ready? All right, here we go. Number 10. Orange Coast College in Costa Mesa. And as far as the details as to why, it doesn't really matter. We just like doing lists. Number nine. (laughs) West Hills College in Lemoore. Never heard of it. Stephanie, have you ever heard of it? L-E-M-O-O-R-E. No, not at all. No. Weird. No. Number eight. (laughs) Evergreen Valley College. Do you know the way? To San Jose. I've heard of San Jose, but not Evergreen Valley College. Sounds like something out of a movie. One of those fake colleges. You ever watch Law and Order? They have a fake college like Hudson University. It's supposed to be like NYU. They always make up these universities. That's what it sounds like. Evergreen Valley. You got to do that so they don't sue you. I wrote Law and Order. You did? Uh, Games. Games. No, but still. See, every time I talk to you, something new falls out of your mouth that I didn't know about you. Well, I don't want to get too distracted, but yeah, you got to make up names so that that places and people who don't who actually exist don't don't take you to court. Gosh. Okay. All right. Number seven. (laughs) Norco College in say it with me. Norco. Makes perfect sense. Number six. Santa 
Santa Rosa Junior College. Where? Santa Rosa. Mm. Number five. Saddleback College. I, I've been there. Mission Viejo. Familiar with it. Okay. Number four. <laughs> Haven't heard of this one. De Anza College in Cupertino. De Anza? Yeah. Mm -hmm. How do you spell it? D-E, second word, A-N-Z-A. -A. If you say so. Right. That's what I'm saying. Never heard of it. Uh, number three. Getting ready to say Mo Val, but it's Moreno Valley College in Moreno Valley. Mo Val. That's what we say. You should be an honorary dean. No, I shouldn't. No, I shouldn't. <laughs> Number two. El Colegio de San Mateo, or College of San Mateo, in San Mateo. Not familiar with that one either. Mm hmm. And the number one community college in all of California. <music> Representing Orange County, Irvine Valley College in the beautiful city of Irvine, California. The number one community college in all of the Golden State. I call BS. Why? Pasadena City College, my alma mater is number 12. I call 12. BS. 12. Pasadena City College is way better than Norco. Are you sure? Or, or Are you positive about that? I'm way positive. My favorite, L.A. Harbor College, which was right around the corner from me growing up, was number 13. And people know, like, Pierce College, number 14. That's where my son is going to go. Yep. Um, I'm trying to think of names that we all know. Are there any criteria mentioned here, like free refills? What do you get? Anything? Look, it, it's it's sketchy. I, I couldn't tell you. It says the best community college. Um, For associate degree. Yeah. You know, transfer uh, credits, stuff like that. Who cares? Financial education. Yeah, financial Career aid. outcomes. Yeah. Uh, blah, you know, blah, blah. I mean, the reasons you go. Availability to prostitutes. Stuff know. like that. I mean. <laughs> Avoiding porn, the draft. Yeah. yeah okay. Porn yeah. shot in dorms. Yeah. Stuff like that. But I you mean. Know, nearest dispensary. I mean, Norco? No one even wants to go to Norco. Not to visit, not to really drive through, not to live in. Sounds like a prison. I think there is a prison in Norco. So. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know who? You know who I thought would have, or which college would I thought would have scored higher? Um, Mount Sac. Yeah, and also LA Valley College. Absolutely, Mount Sac is forty fifth. Yeah, I would have thought even Riverside would have done better. Nope, River yeah. Tucky. No, no. Valley College is um, 44, L.A. Valley College. L.A. Trade Tech, 39. L.A. is not doing well. Oh, sorry, Mount Sec is 33. I'm sorry, I read that wrong. It's 33. Yeah, but still, PCC is not, not higher, and so that's why I call absolute BS on this entire list. Okay, Stefan, where did you go to school? You, you went to El Camino, correct? Uh, yeah. Okay, I don't find... Can we find El Camino on El this Camino's list? El Camino's got to be on this list. It's got to be on this list. That's what I was wondering where that was. Okay, let's see. I mean, well, if not, I also went to Santa Monica City College. Okay, let's look for either. Okay. LA Southwest is 28th. Uh, Santa Monica's not higher? What? I'm searching. I'm always... It's not in the top 50. No. Neither are in the top 50. Are you actually sure that these schools exist, Foosh? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Okay, you know what came in at number 22? College... Of the Siskius, Siski, yeah, Siskius. This list is AI generated. None of these names are real, and it's in the city of Weed. What? <laughs> okay, all right. okay. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Weed, wait California. Minute. I've never heard of Weed, California. Wait, a I'm minute. serious. It's 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 S I S K I Y O U S. Time for a show field trip to Weed. Mm. Where are you from? What set you from? I'm from Weed. Southside. More part Paloma? No, there's no El I mean, Camino. Glendale. There's no Santa Glendale. Monica. No. Not in the top 50. Not in the top 50. Of okay. the 77. Foosh, what are you guys doing over there? At either school? Fraud. Like the answer is fraud. <laughs> <laughs> KFI AM 640. We're live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. Whether you love us, hate us, or haven't made up your mind, we're glad you're here. KFI. And K
AOST HD2. Los Angeles, Orange County. Live everywhere.